Greg was a, um, a great husband and a great father and a great friend to many. He just loved to help people. He loved to laugh. He loved to have fun. He was a big, big entity in any room that he walked into. He could, he'd walk in with a huge smile and just light up the room. For several years, we had noticed that Greg's hand became very stiff. And um, it was just really weird. He'd be walking and one arm was up and the other was down and swinging. And we didn't know what was going on. And a couple more years went by, he noticed that his um, dexterity was changing. Another year went by and it wasn't any better. And the doctor, to his surprise, said, you know, I think you ought to go see a neurologist. And we were in a, an Austin neurologist the next day and they did their exam and they felt based on their um, clinical exam that he had Parkinson's. We were very scared of what the future might bring, knowing that physical decline and mental cognition decline could happen. But he, he took the news um, wonderfully in the, in the beginning. He really felt that God gave him this disease to tell a story and to glorify him through it. And he wanted to do that, and he did that hard and strong for the first several years. So after about four or four and a half years of struggling with Parkinson's, he really got a lot worse. He went into a very severe decline of both uh, depression and anxiety. It was very serious. On May 3rd, 2012, Greg was in such despair and so distraught he committed suicide. I didn't see the warning signs. I don't think there were any warning signs. It shocked us all. It devastated us. It was absolutely the hardest thing I've ever been through. It took me a few hours to realize that, oh my gosh, I'm a widow and I'm a single parent and I don't want to be either of those. I felt like I'd been hit with a truck my mind was spinning. I was in a circle that I couldn't stop. I'm normally a pretty together person, getting things done and being places, and I couldn't do a thing. I couldn't think straight. I couldn't work. I cried un uncontrollably. It, it came on at times. I didn't expect it. There was no trigger. And um, it made me mad. I didn't want to be out of control. I didn't want to be vulnerable like that. A friend gave me a copy of the book called A Grace Disguised. And at first, I was in no position to start reading. But gradually at night, I'd open it and I'd start reading. And I couldn't put it down. It's a story about a Christian man who lost his mother, his wife, and one of his children in the car accident, the car that he was driving and hit by a drunk driver. And he watched them all die in front of his eyes. And he wrote a book about his healing journey, and he wrote about the darkness and the pain and being far from God. And when I started reading those words, I thought, that's how I feel, except I'm too ashamed to admit it. I feel so separate from God right now. But as he wrote that and it drew me in, he started talking about God slowly healing and the transforming that comes and letting the darkness in. If you fight it, it keeps coming. So you have to embrace it. You have to go there. You have to let God know the pain and scream and yell. Through reading that book and through reading the Bible and talking with friends, I could feel the Lord pulling me through. Many blessings we were given, many things to show God's presence for each, each and every day. God has walked with me before, during, and after Greg's death. I've, I always feel God's presence, but in those deep, dark times, right after Greg died, I didn't, and it was very scary to me. But He kept revealing Himself to me. He was never gone. I needed to walk through the darkness. I needed to be broken, and I needed to turn to Him. And I remember feeling all I have left is God, and then realizing you've got everything you need.